Welcome to the new lecture of the Real Analysis 1 course. Please check the description of this video to find the links to the previous video, the next video and the entire playlist of this course. Here we have a theorem which states that if A is contained in B and B is countable, then A is either countable or finite. In other words, you have to show that any subset of a countable set is either countable or finite. Now for the proof, we will first assume that B is a countable set. This means that there exists a function f from n to b which is 1 1 and on 2. Now we will assume that A is an infinite subset of B. We have to show that A is countable. For this, let n1 equal to minimum of the set, set of all n element of capital N, such that f of n element of A. That means n1 is the minimum value of n for which f of n belongs to A. Now we will start defining a function g from n to A by setting g of 1 is equal to f of n1 where n1 is this element. Now let n2 equal to minimum of set of all n element of n such that f of n element of a minus set f of n1. Here n2 is the smallest value of n such that f of n belongs to a minus set f of n1 and we are setting g of 2 as f of n2. Similarly, we will define n3 as minimum of set of all n element of n such that f of n element of a minus set f of n1 and f of n2 and we shall set g of 3 is equal to f of n3 and so on. In general, assume that we have defined gk for k less than m and we shall define gm as gm is equal to f of nm where nm is equal to minimum of the set, set of all n element of capital N such that fn element of a minus set of f of n1, f of n2, etc. f of n m minus 1. That means nm is the minimum value of n for which fn is an element of a minus set f of n1, f of n2, etc. f of n m minus 1. Now we have to show that the set A is countable. Now we have defined a function g from n to A. To show that A is countable, we have to show that this g is 1, 1 and on 2. First, we shall show that g is 1, 1. For that, let m not equal to m dash, where m and m dash are elements of capital N, that means a set of natural numbers. Now, m not equal to m dash means nm not equal to nm dash, where m, because m and m dash are natural numbers and by the definition of n1, m2, n3, etc., we know that n1 not equal to n2, not equal to n3 like that. So, here m not equal to m dash implies that nm not equal to nm dash. Now, nm not equal to nm dash implies that f of nm not equal to f of nm dash because the function f is 1 to 1. By the definition of a 1 to 1 function, we know that a function f from a to b is 1 to 1. If a not equal to b in the set a implies that f of a not equal to f of b. Now, f of nm equal to gm. So, replacing f of nm by gm and uh, f of nm dash by gm dash, we get this implies gm not equal to gm dash. We have started by saying that m not equal to m dash. Now, what we got is that we got gm not equal to gm dash. So, this implies that g is 1 1. Now, we shall show that g is on 2. To show that g is on 2, let a be any element of capital A. Since 
A is contained in B, we will get that this A is an element of capital B. Now we know that capital B is countable. So we have this function f from n to b which is 1 1 and on 2. Since this f is on 2, there exists an element n dash in capital N such that f of n dash is equal to a. So f of n dash is equal to a means f of n dash is an element of f of a. Now this means that n dash is an element of the set of all n such that f of n element of a. Now remember we have defined n1 as the minimum element of the set set of all n such that fn element of a and n2 as the minimum element of the set set of all n element of n such that fn element of a minus fn. So step by step when we remove the minimal elements from this set n dash must eventually be the minimum element by at least n dash minus first step. That means at one stage we will get n dash is equal to minimum of set of all n element of capital N such that f of n element of a minus set of f of n1 f of n2 etc f of n dash minus 1. So by the definition of g there exists some k element of n such that g of k is equal to f of n dash. This is by the definition of g. And you know that f of n dash is equal to a. Now what we got is that we got g of k is equal to a. We had a function g from n to a. We took some arbitrary element of a and we have shown that there exists an element k in n such that g of k is equal to a. So this means that the function g from n to a is on 2. Now earlier we have shown that g from n to a is 1 1. Now we have shown that g from n to a is on 2. So the function g from n to a is 1 1 and on 2. Thus we can say that n is similar to a. That means n has the same cardinality as that of a or there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between the set n and a. In other words we can say that a is countable. We have a question here. The first part of the question, why is A similar to A for every set A? A similar to A means A has the same cardinality as A. Part B, given sets A and B, explain why A similar to B is equivalent to asserting B similar to A. So A similar to B means a has the same cardinality as that of B. B similar to A means B has the same cardinality as that of A. Now we shall justify why A similar to B is same as B similar to A. Now part C for three sets A, B and C show that A similar to B and B similar to C implies A similar to C. So if A, B and C are three sets, we have to show that if A is similar to B, that means A has the same cardinality as that of B and B has the same cardinality as that of C, then we have to show that A has the same cardinality as that of C. These three properties are what is meant by saying that similar is an equivalence relation. Now we have heard of an equivalence relation. A relation R is said to be an equivalence relation if it satisfies three conditions. First is that A is related to A for every element A. Second is that if A is related to B, then B is related to A. And third is that if A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. Those are the three things given in the three parts of this question. So the three parts together 
establish that this relation is an equivalence relation. Now we shall see the proofs one by one. The first part is we have to justify why A is similar to A for each set A. Now for every set A we have the identity function defined on A as IA. Identity function on the set A is denoted as IA from A to A defined by IA of X is equal to X. That means the image of every element under this function is that element itself. And we can clearly see that this function is 1 1 and on to as well. As this function is 1 1 and on to we can say that A is similar to A or A has the same cardinality as A. For part B let us assume that A is similar to B. Now this means that there exists a 1 1 on to function from A to B. Now let f be the 1 1 on 2 function from a to b. Now since f is 1 1, the inverse of this function f inverse exists from the set b to the set a. Now since f is 1 1 and on 2, the function f inverse from b to a will also be 1 1 and on 2. So here we got a function f inverse from b to a which is 1 1 and on 2. This means that B is similar to A or B has the same cardinality as that of A. So we have shown that if A is similar to B then B is similar to A. And this completes the proof of the second part or part B. Now for part C let us assume that A is similar to B and B is similar to C. Since A is similar to B, there exists a function G from A to B which is 1, 1 and on 2. Also as uh, B is similar to C, there exists a function F from B to C which is 1, 1 and on 2. Now to show that A is similar to C, we have to show that there exists a function from A to C which is 1, 1 and on 2. For that, we will define the function h from a to c as h is equal to f composition g. Now we know that g is from a to b and f is from b to c. So f composition g will be from a to c. First we shall show that this function h is 1 to 1. To show that h is 1 to 1, we take any two elements of A, that means we will take A1 and A2 element of A and we show that A1 not equal to A2 in A implies that H of A1 not equal to H of A2 in C. So we start by taking A1, A2 element of A where A1 not equal to A2. Our motive is to show that H of A1 not equal to H of A2. Now a1 not equal to a2 implies that g of a1 not equal to g of a2 since g is a one to one function. Now since g is the function from a to b and a1, a2 were elements of the set a then g of a1 and g of a2 are elements of the set b. Now since the function f from b to c is one to one and g of a1 and g of a2 are two elements of b such that g of a1 not equal to g of a2. f of g of a1 not equal to f of g of a2 since the function f is 1 to 1. Now this f of g of a1, g of a1 is an element of b. So f of g of a1 will be an element of c. So f of g of a1 and f of g of a2 are elements of c. Now f of g of a1 means f composition g of a1 and f of g of a2 means f composition g of a2. Now f composition g is h so this implies that h of a1 not equal to h of a2. So we have shown that a1 not equal to a2 element of a implies that 
h of a1 not equal to h of a2 element of c h of a2 is an element of c because h of a2 is the same as f of g of a2 and f of g of a2 is an element of c and this implies that the function h from a to c is 1 1 now we shall show that h is on 2 now to show that h from a to c is on 2 we take any element small c element of capital C and show that there exists an element small a in capital A such that h of a is equal to c. Now for that we will take an element small c element of capital C. Now since f is on to for any c element of capital C there exists a small b element of capital B such that f of b is equal to c. This happens because f is on 2. Now, since b is an element of b and g from a to b is on 2, there exists an a element of capital A such that g of a is equal to b. This happens because g is on 2. So, we will get an element a in a such that g of a is equal to b. Now, from here, we have f of b is equal to c. We take that f of b is equal to c implies f of b. b from here is g of a. So replacing b with g of a, we will get f of g of a is equal to c. Now f of g of a means f composition g of a. And f composition g is h. So you get h of a is equal to c. So we have shown that for any c element of capital C we have an a element of capital A such that h of a is equal to c. This shows that the function h from a to c is on to. Now we have shown that the function f from a to c is on to Earlier, we have shown that the function h from a to c is 1, 1. So the function h from a to c is 1, 1 and on 2. This means that a is similar to c or a has the same cardinality as that of c, which completes the proof of part c.